What's up, y'all? This is Will. Uh, some of you guys know me by Jack or June. And some of you already know that me and the wife decided to move to the Philippines. Um, back into the village where she was born and raised. So we started a new YouTube channel called The Black Man in the Village. But I decided to make this video, you know, just so you guys can know a little bit more about me and how I got to this point where I, I'm at in my life. Um, you know, I was born in, in New York, but my mom's moved to Watts, um, South Central Los Angeles, into some projects, um, Jordan Down projects. I was only about one, maybe going on two. So growing up, you know, I saw a lot, a lot, you know, but it was good. It was fun. We had some good time, fun times. And the bad things that I've seen and done, um, which would be really bad to you guys, you know, but that's what we saw. That was life. So we, we were used to it, you know, a lot of violence, uh, gangs, uh, drugs, and robbery, things like that. Um, but I lived in these projects for about 18, 19 years. And I remember, um, about gangs at an early, early age. I can remember I was about maybe two going on three and I, I went running out the door and my mom was like, she came to the door and she was like, boy, where are you going? I said, Mama, the pig meeks and the Black Panthers are having a fight. I'm going to help the Black Panthers. She was like, boy, you better get your nail butt back in here. So, you know, I went back in the house. I'm only about two or three. I'm mad, y'all. I'm mad because I wanted to help the Black Panthers because, you know, the back, Black Panthers had a spot in the projects. And they used to give us um, free breakfast. It was like just grits and rice, but, you know, it was free. So, you know, I was like, you know, the Black Panthers, that's, those are my guys. So that was the first time I really knew about gangs. But, you know, growing up, uh, as I got older, you know, yeah, I did what I saw and I did what the other people did. And, you know, my friends and brothers, you know, we had to survive. So we did what we had to do uh, to survive. You know, even though, you know, I was into a lot of bad things growing up, but I was always a smart kid. Um, in junior high, you know, I went to school maybe once or twice a week, but I never missed a Friday because Fridays was the day we took tests. Um, so I, I, I would go in on a Friday, take a test and pass. And that's how I graduated in, in, in junior high. But, you know, in second grade, I was a, a state-identified gifted student. So I was always smart. But, you know, I guess you can call me I was a smart gangster. <laughs> that's what I was. Then, you know, in high school, it was the same. Um, went to school maybe two or three times a week. Um, and, you know, to test and, and pass the test and going to school only two, three times a week. I was actually number 12 in the class, GPA. Uh, so, you know, I, I had a brain up there, but I wasn't using it the right way. And then I went to one year of college. Um, but yeah, I flunked out of college that one year because, you know, I was still doing the same thing and it didn't work in college, you know, trying to go to classes two, three times a week or once a week. So that failed and I went back to the projects. And, you know, when I went back after that, I was getting into a lot of stuff, y'all, a lot of stuff. Um, it was just stuff I knew and, and I was trying to survive. But, you know, I was getting into so much bad stuff. It was like, I should have been dead or I should have been in prison a long time ago, but it was always, always something kept getting me out of things. And I did not know what it was 
And what I'm talking about is, you know, it's been it's been two, no, three times where I was in handcuffs. And, I'm, you know, I'm thinking now, damn, finally getting ready to go to jail. And, and the handcuffs have come off me. That happened three times. It's been twice where I was caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, a different game, you know, it was, I think, about two or three of them. And they knew where I was from. And they had a gun to my head. This happened twice. Both times. Had the gun right here to my head. It was going to shoot me. And for some reason, they didn't shoot me. Um, what's that? That's five times right there that I should have been dead or in jail. Um, another incident happened where I got jumped. And it was about, mm, I'd say, 15 guys. And the plan was to take me to the clubhouse, torture me, and then throw me over on the freeway. Uh, but out of nowhere, this guy came out of nowhere and, and saved me and just got everybody off of me and told me it was my lucky day. And he let me go. Um, then the last time I was out, you know, called myself making my money. Um, I was at this spot and the, the police raided the spot. And it was a crazy fluke way that, you know, I got away. I got, I, you know, just about everybody else went to jail that, that night, but I didn't. Uh, but after that night, you guys, I went home and I just knew that that was my last chance. Because, you know, to me, I kept saying, you know, God has given me so many chances, you know, and I done got out of so many things where I know I should have been dead or in jail. And I knew that that was my last chance. Because um, I, I got hurt that night. Um, but I, you know, I didn't go to jail and I didn't die. So when I came home about two, three in the morning, I knew that was my last chance. I knew it. Uh, I knew I, I just felt that no more chances. So I came home, and it was about uh, 3, 4 in the morning, and I was in uh, my mom's living room. And for the first time in my life, I, I prayed to God. And I've never, ever prayed to God. And um, I can remember exactly what I said. I said, God, I know that that was my last chance, um, but this is the only life I know. I said, you know, Show me a sign of what to do, you know, to get me out of this life. And right at that time, you guys, I had reached out and turned on my television. And as the television fuzzed in, it was an old um, army commercial. And Uncle Sam was pointing at me. He was pointing at me. And he said, we want you for the U.S. Army. And I looked like that. And I thought about it. I said, damn, that's my sign right there. So I went to a recruiter two days later. Um, and about three or four weeks after that, shit, I was in basic training. Um, went to basic training, got me off the streets. Actually made me a whole new, different person. Um, you know, even though I was growing up, you know, I did things I shouldn't have did. And I, you know, I followed the crowd. But, you know, I always had a good heart. I always had a good heart. And so I went into the military. You know, I was a combat medic. Um, so, you know, saving lives. Uh, left the military. and did 12 years. Uh, got out and got my um, RN license, registered nurse. Uh, worked the emergency room for about another um, 13 years. Um so I was helping people, but, you know, I always felt that, you know, it was something missing, something missing. Um, then this one night I had this, this dream and I don't know if it was a dream or what, um, 
but I was asleep. And I could feel my heart was, was hurting, but I couldn't wake up. And I was, you know, talking to myself while I'm sleeping. I was like, oh my God, I'm having a heart attack while I'm sleeping. I'm, I'm getting ready to die in my sleep. All of a sudden, you know, it was dark and I was standing in, in this dark place. And it was a voice. Um, the voice said, I'm going to give you three tasks. Now, this is a dream, y'all. The voice said, I'm going to give you three tasks. And then a light popped on. It was three rooms in front of me. Um, so each room had a task for me. So I had to go in this this first room. The, the, the first task was easy. Um, it was a woman. This was years ago. And this I... Good, I still remember everything. There was a woman in there. She was a young girl, um, like 14, 15. Brand new mom had a baby. Didn't know how to take care of the baby. Um, was, was you know, stressed out to the max. Uh, was thinking about hurting the baby. So that was the first task. I went in the room, talked to this woman, this little girl, and calmed her down and, and got her, you know, thinking straight. Then I, I came out of that room. Um, the second room was, um, it was someone who was going to commit suicide. So I went in that room, talked that person out of committing suicide. And then in the third room, I uh, was some, uh, was an older couple. They didn't want to get out of the, the house that they were in, but, um, it was getting ready to be demolished, uh, because a freeway was going to be built there and, and they were hiding in the house and they didn't want to leave. So I, I had to go in there and talk those people out of the house. So I did. And when I came back out, uh, the voice said, okay, you completed the task. I'm not ready for you yet. And as soon as they said that, I just rose up in bed and, and my eyes was wide open and I was in a cold sweat, cold sweat. But he also told me too, he's well, exact words now can remember me. He said, um, okay, you completed completed the task. I'm not ready for you yet. So make good of this life what you got left. And that's when I rose up wide awake and just was in a sweat. Then after that dream, I was like, oh my God, that's another time I should have been dead because I know damn well I was having a heart attack. And, uh, you know, if next Years, couple of years, you know, I kept saying, God damn, you know, why did God give me so many chances? It's something I need to be doing, something I need to be doing. Um, until that time, it was uh, some few years back, uh, I went to the Philippines for the first time. And I went into my wife's village. And I thought I grew up poor. It doesn't even come close. Um you know, people here in the United States, we take shit for granted. We do. We take stuff for granted. Um, over there in that village, if they have rice every day, something, just something to eat every day, even just twice a day, they're happy. They are happy. And, you know, it, it, it really touched me. And it kind of, you know, I was like, like, wow, you know, these people are living like this. So, you know, maybe a year later, me and my wife was talking, maybe two years later, and I was like, babe, we should, we should move to the Philippines. And I felt that's what I, why I got all those chances. This is what I think I'm supposed to be doing. This is what he saved me for, uh, to go to the Philippines and help, and help, you know, you know, and try to make a difference. And that's how I got to this point, so... You guys need to come check out the channel because I'm going to, you know, we're going to do some good things. Trust me. You know, we might, and they might not be big things in the beginning, but whatever we can do, we're going to do. So that's me. That's where I came from. This is where I'm now. So you guys, the black man in the village is going to be cool. Trust me. It's going to be cool. So. Come on on the ride with us. All right. Peace out. Love you.